everyone, my name is Kim and I'm the Manager of Education and Youth Programs at the Museum of Fine Arts St. Petersburg. This week, MFA staff are celebrating National Children's Book Week by reading some of our favorite storybooks related to the MFA collection. Today's book tells the story of the artist who created these three paintings. Let's look closely for a moment. Where do you think these were painted? What are they paintings of? Can you guess who the artist is who made them? Our friend Stephanie, who's the curatorial assistant at the MFA, is going to read us the book My Name is Georgia by Jeanette Winter. Look closely at the pictures in this book and see if you can find any connections to the three paintings we have at the MFA. Hi, my name is Stephanie Chell. Today I'm going to be reading My Name is Georgia, a portrait by Jeanette Winter. I am reading this book because I think Georgia O'Keeffe is an amazing artist. I love her flowers, but I really love her landscapes of out west. Georgia O'Keeffe was born on a farm in Wisconsin in 1887. When I was 12 years old, I knew what I wanted, to be an artist. I've always known what I wanted. When I was small, I played alone for hours and hours and hours. I was satisfied to be all by myself. I did things other people don't do. When my sisters wore sashes, I didn't. When my sisters wore stockings, I wore none. And when my sisters wore braids, I let my black hair fly. I rode to town every Saturday to copy pictures from the stack in the art teacher's cupboard. At home, I looked out my window and drew pictures of what I saw. Maybe I could make something beautiful. At school in Chicago, I drew from statues in the museum. At school in New York, I painted one still life painting a day, every day. At school, I painted my teacher's ideas. But when the school days were over, I went out into the wide world to discover my own ideas. I went to the Texas Plains, the wild west of my childhood books. You have never seen sky. It is wonderful. I walked into the sunset. I felt the wind across the plains. And I painted the sunset and the sky and the wonderful loneliness and emptiness of the place. I painted day and night. I worked till my head felt felt all light in the top. I have things in my head that are not like what anyone else has taught me, shapes and ideas. But I bundled up my paintings and went to New York City to be where other artists lived. I walked down the canyons of steel. I lived high up in the clouds and painted what I saw from my window. But sometimes what I saw from my window was the far away calling me. I painted a garden in the city. I wanted everyone to see flowers the way I saw them. I looked closely at the flowers. I painted a Camilla. I painted it big so people would notice. I painted a jack in the pulpit. I painted it big so people would see. I painted poppies and petunias and sunflowers and ginseng weeds and irises and apple blossoms. My garden bloomed until everyone saw the flowers the way I saw them. But still, I looked to the sky the distance has always been calling me. I went to the New Mexico desert, so far away that no one ever comes. I was satisfied to be all by myself. It was too dry for the flowers to grow, but there were bones. I gathered the bones, big bones, little bones, short bones, long bones, a cow's skull, a horse's skull, a ram's skull, and brought the bones home to paint. One day, 
I held one up against the sky, and I saw the blue through that hole. I painted what I saw. I saw the sky and the red hills. I walked in the hills at daybreak and twilight, at noon and in starlight. I painted the arms of two red hills, reaching out to the sky and holding it. I painted the Padernal Mountain in the far away. I painted it over and over and over again, and then again and again. God told me if I painted that mountain enough, he'd give it to me. I drove my Model A across the desert and back, and up and down over the hills. I painted in my studio on wheels. Until the afternoon, bees chased me home. Even in winter, I went far out into the far away and painted in the bitter cold. I painted when the wind was so strong it nearly blew me away. I did things other people don't do. I climbed my ladder to the night sky to wait for the sun. I slept under the stars to see the morning sky when I woke. I stayed in the desert. My hair turned from black to gray to white, as white as the bones. I still walked the red hills. My pile of bones grew. My flowers bloomed in the desert, and the Padernal was mine. And the sky, oh, it was still wonderful. I painted the sky one more time. I painted my sky big so people would see the sky the way I did. I worked from dawn to dusk every day for weeks and months. Then, as I painted the last cloud, the sun slipped behind the paderno, I laid my brushes down. Kiss the sky for me. Georgia O'Keeffe lived to be 98 years old. In museums all across the land, people see her flowers, deserts, hills, cities, and skies the way she did. I hope you can see her vision too. Thanks, Stephanie. These paintings are all by American artist Georgia O'Keeffe. Did you notice any similarities between our paintings and the pictures in the book? One of our favorite things about these three paintings is that they show the story and evolution of the artist's career. The first was painted while she lived in New York. It is titled New York, Night, Madison Avenue, and was painted in 1926. It may reflect a view looking out of a skyscraper. The second is one of her famously big flowers. It is titled Poppy and was painted in 1927. And the third is of her beloved desert mountains. It is titled Gray Hills Painted Red, New Mexico, and was painted in 1930. Thanks again to Stephanie and to you for joining us today. Tune in next time for another favorite storybook related to the MFA.